Daniel is very cute. Happy child, you know. Lots of drawing, even from an early age. Never any trouble when she's little. Things change, don't they? <laughs> yeah, she was lovely. Still is. But I, I won't tell her that. I first knew her just through games and stuff online, um, through a mutual friend. That was probably like in 2014. She had a school checkup, uh, and one of the things they get you to do is basically lean forward. Um, and the doctor noticed that one shoulder was slightly higher than the other. And as time went on, it progressed. Well, after numerous trips up and down to the hospital, they decided on doing the operation, which consisted of cutting her open from basically the back of her neck to the top of her, her butt, exposing the spine, putting in steel rods, screwing into the spine. And the decision was basically mine, whether she had it done or not. Um, if we didn't have the operation, then it would have got worse and it could have caused damage to a breathing um, and lots of other aspects of the life. On the other side, the actual going through it was very traumatic. Um, I took the decision that this was the, the lesser of two evils. Um, the pain she's gone through subsequently, I don't know whether I made the right decision. It's difficult, it bothers me. Um, but what's done is done. It can't be undone. We talk about her problems quite a lot, like if she was upset or whatever, obviously I'd always message her. But it always felt so hard to help because she was like all the way in Cornwall and stuff and like there's only so much you can say like through text. It's a shame that she lives so far away because I think as time went on and it, it seemed like maybe she started to struggle a bit more, it seemed to get harder to like try and like reach out and help. She said a lot that it's hard for her to do like long train journeys and stuff because of her back. Um, and so it was like even if she was in a position to travel constantly and see people and maybe get that face-to-face -face time with people that, that seems to help her, um, she's also now got a physical thing that stops her from doing that. Um, as much as she'd like to. Um, so that just means that she's kind of even more sheltered and I can completely understand why that would make her mental situation worse. The, the fact she's interested in everything from sort of old medical books, um, dead animals, well, taxidermy, uh, okay, it's a different thing, but each to their own. You know, it's, it's not for me to say what she should like and what she shouldn't like. She likes them, so what's wrong with that? Thank God, OK. You can have that as a present, huh? Thank you. Uh, um, ten pounds for that, yeah? Yes. Give me a present. This is my Goliath beetle. They're, um, big. This is my scorpion. I bought a box of insects from Facebook. I ordered some, I got some tarantulas, some moths, scorpion and stuff. And when I got them in the box, <laughs> they, had, they had all basically like exploded. And that was the only thing that survived. It was kind of traumatizing opening this box and it, like a tarantula the size of my face would just in pieces. So, <laughs> so I, yeah, I saved him and I, I just, I, I got this frame from TK Maxx. So I just pinned him onto it. These are like medical dictionaries. This is practical pathology and morbid anatomy. Um, third edition. It's quite old. A lot of people in my family are, are good at art. My wife was incredibly good, again, at sort of illustration. I think she, she was offered a job um, in the cartoon industry, but you know, parents were a bit against it. You know, you should get a proper job or something like that. Like, yeah, I hate that sort of thing. You know, if children have got talent, it's not that you should push them into doing something against their will, but you should certainly give them the opportunity to pursue it as much as they, they want. 
I think ever since I was a little tiny baby child, I've always sort of been drawn to art or, and like creating things. We'd always draw in my spare time, but because of college, it sort of felt like a chore more than a, a hobby. So I came out of this drawing hiatus because I really like Lil Peep. I really enjoyed his music and I, I just I just wanted to draw him because there were so many what I thought were iconic photos of him. It kind of moved on more to the celebrity digital drawing stuff where she'd do those like amazing drawings that looked exactly like the photo. He was one of the first people like celebrity wise to sort of share my art and that sort of kicked off uh, a big phase where I I just started drawing people that I like the music of. Posted on Lil Peep's Instagram, obviously he's got, he had tens of thousands of followers. I drew Post Malone. He's obviously got like hundreds of thousands of followers, got tens of thousands of retweets and, and likes. I drew Suicide Boys, Tyler Creator. It was like every single time I drew someone, it would get more popular or someone even crazier would like it. And then people knew me as the sort of Twitter art girl that drew things almost like photos. Like reposted by, by another massive celebrity that just kind of kept going. It had the, the craziest, most famous people following me, yet yeah, it sort of seemed to reach everywhere. It was so cool, like, literally getting up Post Malone's like verified Twitter and being like, yeah, like that's my mate drew that. I gained 25, 30,000 followers in a night and I've done album art for Luna C. At one point, the Steve Harvey show approached me. That was probably the craziest thing that happened because of the Donald Glover painting, Willow Smith. I messaged her and asked her to do some personal art pieces for her. Like, my best friend is like talking to one of the Smiths. <laughs> it's just like so surreal. And it sort of got painfully overwhelming after a while. I didn't want to do it anymore. Like, I didn't want to draw these hyper-realistic things that made people think of me as some sort of, like, art robot. I did art that made me happy, and it just didn't make me feel very happy anymore. After, I don't know, maybe a year of not doing much, I, I started craving doing art again, because I, it's, it's just something that I always end up coming back to. I wanted little, like, canvases of funny things on my wall with bright colours, so I started doing these these little ones, and I thought I'd give it a go. I've just started doing this more and more often. I, I don't do it as often as I did the realistic ones, but they don't take hundreds of hours. They're more fun, and it's just, it's just a lot more therapeutic for me. It's more of a, a hobby again, rather than like a, a job. I guess I'll always be creating art, and it's not exactly like my back's gonna get better, so. I think I'm just going to try and uh, do as much as I can within my uh, limits and do things that are fun. I want to I want to enjoy what I'm painting. I want to make art that I like and not art that, that just that they like.